Greetings, man and woman from North, South, East, and West. Hi, I'm back, and thank you for joining my Christian channel, Apple Tree. Today, we are discussing Jesus goes before you. Let us pray for understanding of today's Bible study. Lord, thank you for this time to come to you. Lord, please open up our minds and hearts to receive and understand the Bible. Open our eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instructions. Give us understanding so that we can desire to know you better. And let your Holy Spirit guide us into the truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus goes before you. Not beside you, not behind you, but before you. Today, I am reading from my student study Bible, the NIV, New International Version. It's good to have a reference Bible if you do not have a reference Bible to uh, follow behind your King James Version Holy Bible. Google is always available. Remember to pray for understanding and receiving God's Word in your own personal Bible study. And most importantly, during Bible study, you want to apply to your daily life what it is God has led you to read, study, and learn. You want to apply it, okay? So again, Jesus goes before you, all right? And in my NIV Bible, I want you to turn in your Bible to John chapter 10, because John chapter 10, it talks about the shepherd and his flock, okay? This is really why I like this student study Bible. It has so many good insights there. See, inside a modern shepherd, what a good shepherd would look like today. It has the shepherd and his flock. It talks about the good shepherd. So we're going to be reading from chapter 10, not the entire chapter, but scriptures from chapter 10, as well as Exodus and Nehemiah in this Bible study. But Jesus goes before you. John chapter 10. Let's start. Okay. I'm just going to read all the way from uh, verse 1 to verse 21, and then we'll go from there. All right? So, Jesus goes before you. We're talking about the shepherd and his flock. Jesus is our shepherd, and we, the Christians, are his flock. Okay? And it starts off with, with um, Jesus telling you, it says, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. Okay, let me touch bases on verse 1. If you hear someone tell you, let me just repeat that again. It says, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate but climbs in by some other way is a thief and a robber. Okay, first of all, Jesus, he is the shepherd, and he is the gate. No one can come in besides but through entering through Christ to get to God. Okay, he is the gate. He is the gatekeeper. He is the watchman who opens the gate for the sheep to go in. He calls the sheep, they hear his voice. So Jesus is the gate. So if somebody tells you, oh, there's several ways that you can get to God. No, they are a liar and the truth is not in them. And that's why Jesus made sure he said, but if someone climbs in by some other way, he is a thief and a robber. In other words, a wolf. Okay, a wolf would try to get in the sheep pen by going climbing over the fence or going behind the shepherd to sneak up on the, the sheep, a wolf, all right? So the wolf is the enemy, which is Satan, okay? Which is anybody that is against Christ. So if people are saying there's other ways to get to God and it's not just only Christ, then that's not the truth. There's one gate to go through to get to God and that's Jesus, he is the gate, all right? So. Again, verse 1, I tell you the truth. The man who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The man who enters by the gate is the shepherd of his sheep. The watchman opens the gate for him, 
and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. All right, verse three. The watchman opens the gate for him and the sheep listens to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. He's going to call you by name in the Holy Spirit and lead you out of what? He's going to lead you out of darkness, lead you out of sin. Verse 4 in chapter 10, John says, When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. Okay, see how it says he goes on ahead of, of them, not beside them, behind them. He goes on ahead of them. Let me ask you this. Have you ever seen... Um, have you ever seen where uh, a farmer trying to drive a bunch of geese from one location to another? Have you ever seen a farmer try to drive geese? He goes behind the geese, doesn't he? He goes behind the geese. So when you compare this to a shepherd who leads his sheep, the shepherd goes before them and the sheep simply follow him. We Christians are the sheeple. We're the sheep. Okay. So chapter 10, John, verse 5, it says, But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they will run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Verse 6, Jesus used this figure of speech, but they did not understand what he was telling them. Let me stop there. Verse 6. He used this figure of speech, but people listening did not understand what he was telling them. That is why I pray before Bible study for understanding. And also when you receive Christ in your life as your Lord and Savior, Father, our Father in Heaven sends us the Helper, who is the Holy Spirit, who gives us the understanding, who removes the veil that the world that Satan has put over us to keep us from understanding, that veil is then removed so we understand and we get it, okay? We understand that we only follow Christ and not other religions and other beliefs that are antichrist. Okay. John chapter 10 verse 7 says, Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth. I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. Okay, John chapter 10, verse 10, when Jesus says the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, the thief is Satan. It's the God of this world, okay? It's who came before Jesus in your life where we were born in sin and in darkness God calls us out, okay? So whoever was before Jesus called you out, that was the enemy, the thief, and the robber. That's what he meant by that scripture uh, in, verse, in verse 8 when he said, All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate, verse 9, I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved, okay? You will be saved. That is a promise. If you turn from your sin and you accept Christ in your life, he will enter into your life the immediate moment that you invite him in. Okay? So, and that is when you accept his calling. Because we don't call Jesus. He actually calls us. And it's up to, it's up to us to answer. Okay? And, and the moment we answer the call, Christ lives in us. And we have eternal 
life from the very moment we invite him in. That's what he meant by John chapter 10 verse 10 when he says, I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. So you will have the gift of eternal life, okay? Chapter 10 verse 11, talking about our good shepherd here who goes before us. And it says, I am the good shepherd, verse 11. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And that is something God did on the cross. Jesus did this on the cross, okay? And we know Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's the three trinity in one, all right? So verse 12, it says here, The hired hand is not the shepherd who owns the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. Verse 13, the man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. But verse 14, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Verse 15 in John chapter 10 says, Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for the sheep. Okay? And when he's saying this, is because he knows, you know, he's going to lay his life down on the cross for us. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for our sins. Okay? John chapter 10, verse 16 says, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice and there shall be one flock and one shepherd. Verse 16 in John chapter 10, when Jesus is saying, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen, he means us, like me and you. He means people who are not of the Jewish descendant. Because as we know, the Jews are God's chosen people. But not only the Jews uh, get you know, the gift of the gospel, the gospel is for everyone. So that's what Jesus meant by saying in verse 16, chapter 10 in John, I have other sheep that are not of this sheep pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. So there's no division. There's no check the right button square if you're black and check this square if you're white and check this if you're J Japanese and check this if you're Puerto Rican. No, it's one shepherd, one flock. Okay? beautiful there's no division in christ we're one with one shepherd isn't that beautiful so it's the gospel is for the jews the chosen people and for anyone else who believes in the son of god okay so john chapter 10 verse 18 says oh verse 17 says the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. Verse 18, no one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my father. Wow, wow, wow. That's powerful right there. Jesus said no one takes his life from him, but he lays it down only to pick it back up again. <laughs> okay? All right? Okay? You lay down your life for Christ. Guess what? He's going to pick it right back up again and give you life in full, eternal life. So, Jesus is our shepherd and we are his sheep. The sheeple. <laughs> Jesus goes before you. He goes before me. He goes before us. He does not drive us, but he leads us. 
Now, the legalistic people, they drive others. But Jesus leads. He goes in front of us. He is not like the sergeant who says, Men, cross this river. I'll cover you from behind. No, he's not like the sergeant. Because he suspects, Jesus suspects, that the river is infested with alligators. So he's not going to tell you to cross that river. He'll cover you from behind like the sergeant does <laughs> in a military. No, Jesus is not that kind of a leader. He goes in front of us. Now, in the Old Testament, Jesus led the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt. And do you know how Jesus appeared back then? Because like I said, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is a three trinity in one. You know how he led the children of Israel out of bondage in Egypt back then? He appeared in a pillar of a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. Oh, you don't believe me? Well, let's take it to the scriptures. Exodus chapter 13, verses 21 through 22. Jesus is awesome. Some of the things that you hear from the Bible sounds unbelievable, but we serve a God who is magnificent. <laughs> and what's unbelievable to man is believable to our God who is almighty and powerful. So in Exodus chapter 13, verse 21, it says here what I just said. By day, the Lord went ahead of them. It didn't say beside them. It didn't say he went behind the children of Israel to lead them out of Egypt. It says, by day, the Lord went ahead of them in a pillar of cloud to give them on their way. And by night, in a pillar of fire to give them light so they could travel by day or night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day nor the pillar of fire by night left its place in front of the people. Where was the pillar? It was it was it beside the people? Was it behind? No, it was in front. Okay? It was in front of the people. So in fact, the pillar of cloud shaded the people from the hot desert sun so that they were kept cool during the day. And at night, when the desert got very cold, Jesus, the pillar of fire, gave them light as well as warmth. Whether he was the pillar of cloud or fire, he went in front of them. So Jesus goes before you. And as long as they followed him, the Israelites did not have to worry about nothing. Jesus took care of all their needs. He gave them water when they were thirsty and bread and meat when they were hungry. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. They were kept in good health throughout the 40 years of their wandering in the wilderness. Let me go ahead and take you to the scripture to back that up. Nehemiah. Nehemiah in chapter 9. Nehemiah in the Bible in chapter 9. Verse 21. Nehemiah, their feet didn't even swell. These people walked forever. They walked and they walked and their feet did not swell. It's amazing how God will sustain you when you are a child of God. So it's in Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 20. It says, you gave your good spirit to instruct them. 
You did not withhold your manna from their mouths, and you gave them water for their thirst. Verse 21 in Nehemiah chapter 9 says, For forty years you sustained them in the desert. They lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out, nor did their feet become swollen. We don't have swollen feet, us children of God. <laughs> he sustains you when you trust in him. He sustains you. He's the ultimate provider when you trust in him. My friend Jesus, our shepherd, wants us to just follow him. You know how you follow, you click and you follow people on Instagram? Jesus wants you to click and just follow him. And as long as you allow him to lead you, all your needs will be taken care of. He is your provision. Jesus is your healer. Jesus is your counselor. Jesus is your wisdom. Jesus is your righteousness. Jesus is your sanctification. He can be, those of you who do not know him, your Lord and your Savior. He is everything you need him to be. And in saying that, that concludes our Bible study on Jesus goes before you and he will take care of all your needs. Just follow him. Trust in him. Jesus never fails. For those of you who do not know Christ as your Lord and personal Savior, would you like to know God personally? Because God loves each one of you and has created you to know him personally. He has a wonderful plan for your life. He wants to give you life in full, eternal life. Sin is what is standing in between you and God. People are sinful and separated from God. So we cannot know him personally or experience his love when we have redundant sin, when we're living in a sinful lifestyle. People were created to have fellowship with God. But because of our stubborn self-will, we chose to go our own independent way and not follow God and not fellowship with God. That fellowship is broken then because of self-will characterized by an attitude of active rebellion and passive indifference. It's evidence of what the Bible calls sin. People are separated, but the wages for sin is death. Spiritual separation from God as well. But Jesus, Jesus Christ is God's only provision for man's sin. And through him alone, we can know God personally and experience his love and plan. And Jesus bridges the gap between us and God. He goes before us to do that. Jesus, he died on the cross for our sins while we were still sinners. Romans chapter five, verse eight says so. Then three days later, he rose from the dead as first Corinthians chapter 15, verses three through six says so. And in the Bible days, there were many, many witnesses of this happening. And John chapter 14, verse six, Jesus Christ is saying, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father but through me. He is the gate to eternal life. So we must individually receive Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord so he can go before us. Then we can know God personally and experience his love and plan for us. And to all who receive him, 
to those who believe in his name, Jesus Christ. We become children of God. John chapter 1 verse 12 says so. We receive Christ through faith when we believe. And when we believe in Christ, God gives us a gift called grace. And that is how you and I are saved, by a gift called grace. Wrapped in a bow of faith. We cannot save ourselves. We cannot earn salvation. We can never be good enough without Jesus. When we have faith in his son, Jesus Christ, we're godly convicted to believe and see and understand and feel the remorse of the sin in our life. And we can say, you know, I am a sinner, God. I have sinned against you. I've done bad things repeatedly. I've made mistakes. But I want you to know that Christ died for those mistakes. He died for those sins. He paid the price. All you have to do is believe you are a sinner, Christ died for your sins, and ask him for forgiveness. And not just say, Lord, forgive me, and then turn around and keep doing those sins redundantly every day, but literally have a sorrowful, contrite heart where you are sick and tired of living life in a dead end zone. You're sick and tired of living life feeling sick and tired. You're sick and tired of darkness. You're sick and tired of feeling like you're going in a circle and getting nowhere. Repent. Repentance. With a willful mind, a humbled body, and a sorrowful heart is what matters to him. The attitude of the heart is what really matters to Christ when you're wanting to accept him as your savior. And Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 through 9, For it is by grace you will be saved through faith. And it's not something you could do for yourself. It's a gift from God. You can't do works for this gift. You can't pay for this gift. You can't donate enough for this gift. It's a gift from God. No one can boast about saying they saved themselves. That's Jesus' job. He's an expert at it. So Christ is speaking here and he's saying to you in Revelations chapter 3 verse 20, those of you under the sound of my voice right now, Jesus wants to go before you. You don't have to live this life, do everything on your own in hardship. Jesus is saying in Revelations chapter 3 verse 20, here I am. I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in and eat with him and he with me. What is he going to eat with you? He's going to eat with you the bread of life, that beautiful gift of eternal life. It can be yours right now. You have faith. You believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins. Are you tired of living a sinful life? Are you ready to give it up to receive so much more than you can ever imagine. Receiving Christ involves turning to God from self and trusting Christ to come into your life to forgive you of your sins and make you who he wants you to be. It will be the better, new, and improved you that even you will be even surprised to look in the mirror and be like, wow, I like it. I like how I feel now that I've accepted Christ. I like my life more. Everything is just new and improved, transformed. When you receive Christ, you experience a new birth, a transformed mind. He even gives you a new heart. Ezekiel chapter 36, verse 26. If you've had a hard heart, he softens it where you can feel love again. You can feel and receive his love you can feel love, and then you can give love. I'm telling you, it's so beneficial spiritually and physically, and it's the best decision you can ever make while alive in this lifetime. 
Now is the time to receive that which God has freely given us in His Son. Now is the time to be forgiven for all that you have done and for all of eternity. Now is the time to allow Jesus to go before you. Now is the time to click Jesus and follow Him. Think about it. Nothing else in this life is more important. And any argument, any reasoning, and any thought that attempts to justify it otherwise, or anyone saying that you can get in any other way by going through the gate of Christ, that is a lie. Now is the time to turn and humbly seek the one who loves us beyond measures. Jesus loves us. And it's not just enough to agree intellectually that, yeah, Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And yeah, he sure did die on the cross for our sins. That's not enough. It's not enough to have an emotional experience and, and say you believe today, but then go on living like an atheist tomorrow. We receive Jesus Christ by faith. It's an act of our will. It's our choice. It's a daily choice to follow Christ and pick up our cross. It's a daily choice. That every day you make that choice, it becomes easier, it becomes better and more rewarding. So if you can receive Christ right now by faith through prayer, I'm going to lead those of you who have wandered, wander, come on home, you're never too far. Come on back, rededicate your life back to Christ, get on that, get on. It's not about being right, it's about being righteous. And those of you who would love to know Christ as your Lord and Savior so he can go before you in life, so that he can take care of your needs, so he can give you water when you're thirsty, give you bread when you're hungry, clothe you, feed you, give you health, healing. I'm telling you, it's very rewarding. I am a personal witness to this. God knows your heart. And he is not concerned with words as he is with the attitude of your heart. You gotta really want this. You gotta really be sick and tired of feeling sick and tired and sin. You know what I mean? You gotta really want this. All right? So, with a sorrowful heart, a willful mind, and humble body, repeat this repentance prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I am a sinner. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner, and I ask for your forgiveness, Father. I believe Jesus Christ is your Son. I believe that he died for my sins and that you raised him to life. Jesus, I believe in you and what you have done for me. Thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I want to trust you as my Lord and Savior. I will follow you as my Lord from this day forward. I open the door of my life, Jesus, and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins and giving me eternal life. Lord, yes, I give you my life, my heart, and my soul. Holy Spirit, change me from within. Make me the kind of person you want me to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Congratulations, my brothers and sisters. And just like that, the Bible promises you eternal life to all who receive Christ. It says so in 1 John chapter 5, verses 11 through 13. I hope that you express this prayer with the desire of your heart. Thank God right now. Thank you, Jesus. Just say thank you, Lord Jesus for saving me because Christ is now in your life. He will never leave you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse five. You can know on the basis of his promise that Christ lives in you 
and that you have eternal life from the very moment you just invited him in. We do not depend on feelings as Christians. We depend on the promise of God's word, the Bible. The Christian lives by faith and trust in God and his word. Let me tell you, now that you have entered into a personal relationship with Christ, Jesus is going to go before you. Our Father in heaven is going to send you a helper known as the Holy Spirit to help you. Christ is in your life. Your sins are forgiven. You are a child of God. You receive eternal life. And you can begin the great adventure for which God created you. The moment you receive Christ by faith, as an act of your will, many things are happening right now. Give him thanks. Give him praise. Thank him. Call a family member, a Christian family member, a Christian friend, and, and tell them about what just took place today, what Jesus has done for you. He saved you. He's given you a gift of grace and eternal life. Witness to a family member or friend who does not know Jesus. I mean, can you think of anything more wonderful that could happen to you than entering into a personal relationship with Jesus Christ? Thank God in prayer right now for what he has done for you. Thank you, God, for sending your son to save me. And by thanking God, it demonstrates your faith. And before we conclude our Bible study, I want to remind you that spiritual growth it results from trusting Jesus Christ. Galatians chapter 3 verse 11, the righteous will live by faith. A life of faith will enable you to trust God increasingly with every detail of your life. Trust me, you won't regret it. Go to God in daily prayer. If you do not know how to pray, you can just wake up and thank God for everything you can see, touch, feel, smell, and breathe in. And thank him for your children, your family, for your job, for your shelter, for everything. Thank him and include it in the name of Jesus. And also say this prayer every day. Even if it's once a day, you can say it when you wake up. It's called the Lord's Prayer. You can say this prayer on the way to work. You can say this prayer before you go to bed. You can hold hands with your spouse. You can hold hands with whoever you're courting to be your future wife or future husband. And you can say the Lord's Prayer. You can say it with your children before bed. It's the Lord's Prayer. And you can find it in the Bible in the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse 9 through 13. And Jesus recommends you to say this prayer. Say it every day because if you do, this prayer will start to manifest in your life. And it has so many benefits in this one prayer. Let's say it now. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9 through 13. Jesus said, pray then like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This prayer will start to manifest in your life. Again, say it on your way to work. Say it when you first wake up. Say it before you go to bed. Just find somewhere in your busy day to say this prayer. And I guarantee you. What you're saying in that prayer will start to manifest in your life and benefit you greatly. And try to read the Bible. Even if it's a few scriptures, you got to start somewhere, right? Right? Yeah. And the more you do it, it will become more natural. It will become where it's, it's spiritual food. The Bible is spiritual food. Think of it as your spiritual refrigerator to feed your spirit daily. The same way we go to the refrigerator to eat daily, I want you to go to the refrigerator of the Bible to feed your spirit daily. And the more you do it, the more it becomes naturally like a part of your lifestyle. And you can start reading the book of John. You can start reading the book of Proverbs. That's full of a lot of common sense about life. Just remember to obey God moment by moment. The more you practice it, the more it becomes natural. The more you'll want to. The more you'll enjoy learning about who has died on the cross for you and who is saving you. 
and trust God every detail of your life. Witness for Christ by your life and words. Matthew chapter 4 verses 19 says, Come, follow me, Jesus said. I will make you fishers of men. That's why I recommend you tell somebody about what Jesus has done for you today. Share my video. That's a cool way of witnessing as well. So, the Holy Spirit, allow him to control and empower your daily life. And last but least, fellowship in a good church. If you do not belong to a church, do not wait to be invited. Take the initiative. Call the pastor of a nearby church where Christ is honored and his word is preached. You can start this week. Make plans to attend regularly, whether that be online or in a church that is practicing safe social distancing. But you can eat your, your breakfast in the morning and you can log in on online on Facebook. They have churches, church services through Facebook. And you can find a nearby church that's having online service and eat your spiritual food as well. Okay, because as several logs burn brightly together, it's a metaphor I'm saying, several logs burn brightly together. You put one of those burning logs by itself on a cold ground and the fire goes out. So it is with your relationship with other Christians. So fellowship with other Christians, other believers. Okay, so remember your walk with Christ depends on what you allow him to do in and through you, empowered by the Holy Spirit. So allow Jesus to go before you. With that being said, in closing prayer for Bible study, thank you, God, for this time. Thank you for man and woman from north, south, east, and west with ears to hear the Spirit and your holy word and, and an open heart to receive and accept you as our Lord Christ and Savior. Thank you for saving them, Lord. Thank you for saving me. God, thank you for this opportunity to share my faith. Thank you for your bread of life, your word. Holy Spirit, thank you for leading us into truth. Jesus, again, thank you for dying for us, our sins on the cross. And Father, teach us how you want us to apply your word to our lives daily. And keep us from drifting away from the word. Transform a new mind, new heart, and create within us a clean heart, Lord. And I pray for those who have heard this message from beginning to the end. Lord, please meet their needs. God, I thank you for this time. In Jesus' name, amen. My brothers and sisters, please like, share this video, subscribe to my channel, Apple Tree. If you need a prayer request, put it down below in the comments and I will pray for you. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to pray for you right now. I pray, my brothers and sisters, that you grow in grace and peace as you fully understand what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. May God protect you. May God bless you. May God call you and draw you. And may God keep you in Jesus name. Amen.